Well, regional mayors have become an increasingly important part of our politics, and especially, of course, with some of these new devolution deals expanding their powers. Well, Andy Street, a former John Lewis boss, has been the Conservative mayor of the West Midlands since 2017. Not a traditional Conservative heartland, fair to say, uh, but he joins us now uh, live. Thanks very much for being uh, with us. Good um, morning, Sophie. I'm keen to get your view on all sorts of things, um, but just to start kind of big picture, the Conservatives have had a pretty disastrous set of local election results. Um, there is a real challenge for Rishi Sunak at the next election. You, of course, represent an area where, you know, you're used to winning against Labour, you're used to fighting tight uh, seats and scrapping for votes, if you like. What do you think the Conservative Party needs to do now? To deliver on what it says it's going to do. And I don't just say that as a sort of glib response. I say it on the basis of very firm evidence in the West Midlands and the elections we had uh, three weeks ago now, actually the Conservatives in the West Midlands combined authority area did not lose a single seat. We held three metropolitan councils. They're the only ones in the country. And the reason why strong local leadership in those areas were delivering on what people wanted to say, see. It's quite interesting when you say it's delivering on what you've said already, because there will be some people who say, you've got to change the message. Look at what's just happened. The voters have basically sent a really big message that they're sick of what the Conservatives are doing, they don't like the direction of the government. Is it not time to change course? No, definitely not. It's time to deliver on the five things the Prime Minister has said. And again, that, there's clear evidence on the ground that that's what people really are worried about. NHS waiting lists, as you've already been talking about. Of course, the migration statistics, as you've been talking about. But also all the underlying economic pieces. And my read of the, uh, of the results, actually, we had good results in the West Midlands, as I say. But across the country, there was no surge towards Labour, there was disenchantment from our voters. I accept that. But they're still waiting to see if we can turn it round. Well, in no, so it's towards Labour is still on course to win the next not election. Not necessarily. Many of the Savonists would disagree with that. They did not do well enough to win the next election on those numbers. It was our voters saying we're not... Maybe not to get a majority, but to win and to get into number 10. In a sense, we're talking about the process. The question you asked me is, what have we got to do? Mm -hmm. Deliver, and I'm saying our voters are still waiting to see if we can do that, and I'm very confident with time they will. Certainly, the direction of travel in terms of where we were last autumn and where the Prime Minister's now got us to is much better. Um, let's talk house building. Yes. Because I know this is an area that you're very interested in um, and it feels like there's a bit of a battle uh, within the Conservative Party about what to do on house building, whether or not you should support local communities who are worried about developments on the green belt, whether or not actually the Conservatives need to build houses to really help uh, what many families are calling out for. Where do you sit? So, thank you for asking the question, because there's a story in the Sunday Times yes, this that's morning... that's partly why I'm trying yeah, to... Uh, ..that uh, tries to pitch me against the government. And, uh, frankly, I'm amazed that that's their take on it, because it's definitely not my view. The first thing to say is that the government is achieving much improved housing numbers compared to, dare I say it, the last Labour government. 232,000 homes last year, double the number in 2010. And the reason I think we've got something to say on this is that in the West Midlands uniquely, and the Times did confirm this, we're achieving our housing target numbers. And the way you do that is you do have to take tough decisions in favour of house building. And so what's, but you... your, what's your message then? Because you say, look, you need to take this tough decision. Yes. And there are many MPs who would disagree with that on your side, that actually, look, we've got to listen to the local communities. What, what, what's your message? One of the tough decisions where we can definitely come together is about Brownfield first. I have been absolutely robust about this over the last seven years. So have our councils, cross-party in the West Midlands. And as a result of that, it is encouraging developers to attend to the tough sites in the brownfield areas. Mm -hmm. That's not an easy decision. It requires densification of our city centres. That's being done. And, of course, it requires a lot of public money to enable those brownfield sites to come back to use. But green, green belt, if necessary? Occasionally. Okay. You can never say never. So let's give a good example. Huge investment going in around HS2 for the interchange station in Solihull. The council there are being very brave and say we will have development around that to make okay. the most of it. But it is very much the exception to the rule. If you don't get it right on house building, do you think that the Conservative Party risks alienating a whole group of voters, younger voters? You who... can put it much more positively than that, actually. And it goes back to the first question as well. If I look at the councils where we did really well, we were demonstrably bringing derelict land back to life. We were building the homes. We were doing the regeneration of our town centres. And as a consequence, those young people see, yes, the Conservative Party is the party that delivers for us. And that's the opportunity for us. Um, you talk about the economy as well. 
Um, and I want to talk a bit about migration, um, because net migration figures are out uh, next week. Uh, they could hit 700,000. They're already at 500,000. Rishi Sunak says that's too high and that they need to come down. But, of course, if you look at the numbers, students, work visas, some would say that this is immigration that we need. What, what do you think? So the answer is, uh, it's, again, it's not simple, but yeah. it's binary like that. Uh, we do need skilled migrants in some key areas. So one of the sectors that the government is talking a lot about at the moment is the new industrial sectors, such as the electric vehicle sector. We do need people to come with those skills. But we actually have to deal with the underlying issue about the lack of skills in our own population. So one of the other things we're absolutely focused on in the West Midlands is reskilling, retraining, and that's the real answer. Then you don't need to draw in people in the way in which historically we've been over-dependent. Um, the other thing uh, that I think is one of those kind of big economic issues that's been wrestling with is our relationship with China. I was quite interested to hear Rishi Sunak this morning mm. saying China poses the biggest danger of our age. Mm. Is he right or do we actually need to do business with China? So the answer is both. So let me just explain. Of course he's right when he says it's the biggest uh, challenge of our age because it's going to be the world's economic superpower. It is a superpower that, uh, contrary to the relationship with the US that has been the superpower for the last 100 years, does not share our values. Mm. That is obvious. Mm. And so you do have to think, as a united West, how are we going to adjust, tackle that issue? My opinion is it does not mean you ostracise them completely and do not deal with them economically, but you have to be absolutely alert. So this question about critical national infrastructure, who's owning that, it's absolutely the right thing to call out, but it has to be a policy of engagement. And what's your view on taxes as well? I know I'm doing kind of like a jump You're around. Everywhere. Yes. A little going everywhere. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, it's rare that I get you in the studio, so I'm <laughs> always keen to kind of pick your brains on stuff. Yeah. Um, what, what's your view on the levels of taxes? Historically, they're very high at the minute. Lots of disgruntlement mm. on, among the Conservative Party. Mm. Do they need to come down and which ones would you focus on? So, no-one's questioning the fact that taxes uh, are very high by historical standards. Why? Because we've come through a pandemic, have spent an enormous amount of money, you've got to adjust to that. But the sad lesson of last autumn is if you do it in an unplanned way, you just can't, mm. uh, will be called out by the markets. So what the Chancellor said is right. He wishes to bring them down, will as soon as he, as he can, as soon as the public finances improve. And where would you go first? I would definitely go to business taxation mm. first, because actually you stand back and say, where's the growth in the economy going to come from? It is only through businesses investing. And so that, I think, is the right thing for him, him to have absolutely in his and, sights. And when you say business taxes, mm? corporation tax or what, is there any Corporation tax, yeah. business rates still very challenging in many, many areas, business rates. And as the economy adjusts, mm. there are areas that are really stranded with their business rates. So that's an area where I hope we can move. But uh, investment allowances, uh, would be, which are good, they could move even further. It is, as you say, a very challenging time for businesses at the minute, including John Lewis, <laughs> under quite a lot of pressure. I know you can. <laughs> I, I'm always interested to get your views on, uh, as a former boss of John Lewis, um, how uh, what, how difficult is the situation that it finds itself? Well, the situation's it's hard. To, I've seven years since yeah, I left John Lewis. I'm now the, the, uh, now the champion of the West Midlands, not the champion of John Lewis. But never mind. I can I <laughs> can you. I can give you a view. <laughs> if you ask a straight question, you need a straight answer. So uh, yeah, it's very it's tough for retailers. Everybody knows that, but there are wonderful success stories. If I just look at Birmingham, we've got Selfridges, we've got Primark, we've got Next, mm -hmm. we've got J uh, Sports Direct, all with flagship shops. It can be done. Mm -hmm. And you just have to focus on delighting your customers. Mm -hmm. Sounds so simplistic, but in the good days of John Lewis, that is what was being done with the best product, the best service in the marketplace. Uh now, just finally, and I know that you will have a reason to not know about this story. I wouldn't expect you to be texting Suella Braverman this morning uh, to find out the <laughs> truth of whether or not she did ask civil servants to organise this speed awareness course. But as a Conservative, you know, fighting in marginal areas uh, for your position, how damaging are these stories to well, the brand of the Conservative uh, uh, I, You almost answer your own question, mm -hmm. Sophie. I cannot possibly know about this. I've literally heard it this mm -hmm. morning. Uh, but, I mean, the point is very simple. There have to be standards in public life. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to sit here and make a comment about the Home Secretary. I genuinely do not know. What I do know is the Prime Minister has made it absolutely clear mm -hmm. that for him, standards in public life is an absolutely critical issue. I hope that's how I conduct myself. I hope that's how my party conducts itself. But there is no compromise over it because the public sniff out when you are uh, not doing that and if we serve the public we have to reflect their best standards. And of course he said didn't he, he promised a government of integrity. He did and uh, he's, he's been uh, man to that. Mm.